So a little warning, I guess, for most of this video, it's going to be kind of depressing, rather depressing, but I promise that I will wrap it up with some positive stuff, some positive news. Animal agriculture, particularly on a large scale, also increases the risk from plague level viral outbreaks. The more exposure people like agricultural workers have to animals in unsanitary conditions like farming and rendering, the greater the chance of a new patient zero for an outbreak of a much more severe virus that spreads through the population. Yes, even people who never got anywhere near a farm or a slaughterhouse. This is a very serious problem and one we are very ill-equipped to do anything about. That was from Don't Care About Animals five reasons you should still go vegan, a video I published almost three years ago, exactly like a week away from three years ago. What? What? Okay. I'm not sharing this to say like I told you so or to show how smart I am or like this is, you know, some secret sort of knowledge or something like that. The truth is that many, many, many people knew about this. It's no secret that pandemics are an inevitability when we force people to spend so much time in filthy conditions with billions of animals each year. For years, expert bodies like the World Health Organization and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention have been warning that most emerging infectious diseases come from animals and that our industrialized farming practices are ratcheting up the risk. Livestock health is the weakest link in our global health chain. And we all really know this. It's already happened. Well, maybe we don't because it wasn't really talked about very much. But while the current pandemic likely originated in wild bats, the swine flu H1N1 pandemic of 2009 started with pig farms, hence the name swine flu. And it's why anyone blaming Chinese for COVID while also supporting factory farming, stop talking. And we can't forget about bacterial pandemics like the Black Death. Eating animals puts us at risk for both. And yet most farms and most meat processing plants are still up and running. And because these confined, cramped conditions, I guess that's redundant, these confined conditions are not limited to animals, people who work in meat processing factories are often working closely together, far too close to practice social distancing. Unsurprisingly, they're seeing high rates of infection. Nearly 5,000 workers out of 130,000 workers in 19 states tested positive. And meat processing plants have other unique characteristics that are trickier to modify, like the very cold temperatures and aggressive ventilation systems required to prevent meat from spoiling or getting contaminated with pathogens that cause foodborne illness. These features could also be contributing to the high rates of infection among slaughterhouse workers. Low temperatures allow the virus to stay viable outside the body for longer, increasing the survival of the virus in the air. That really increases the risk of infection in these plants. And because of these outbreaks, many plants are shutting down, which means that many animals, especially pigs, are being killed. Pork and poultry production, and to a lesser extent beef production, is done on a just-in-time basis. Farms typically operate on the assumption that they'll be able to send off mature hogs to slaughter so that hogs still being grown have room to live. There isn't much excess capacity if the mature hogs have to stick around due to meatpacking bottlenecks. It's estimated that 10,000 pigs are being killed every day just in Minnesota alone. And this is all with the support of the government. The livestock industry is already heavily subsidized and then Trump just bailed them out over $9 billion to livestock farmers while also eroding SNAP. Just the best timeline. Now, of course, these animals were going to be killed anyway. And I mean, whether they end up on someone's plate or in the ground makes little difference to me. It's terrible either way. It involves a lot of suffering either way. But I think for many people, the latter is less tolerable, right? It's okay to kill animals for food. It's a necessary evil of sorts. It's harder to defend killing animals slowly and painfully only to throw them in a ditch. So this is what we sign up for when we consume meat, when we consume animal products. It, it's, it's all part of it. The status quo is already terrible enough, but these plagues and extra cruelties 
They're inevitable, so they're part of the system as well. But as we know, alternatives are available, and this is when we get into the good stuff, the positive stuff. Uh, Plant-based meat sales have increased dramatically compared to the same time last year, even prior to calls for you know, social distancing and stay-at-home orders. Tofurky sales are up 40%, Gardein 65%, Morningstar Farm 66 Beyond Meat just had their second most profitable quarter. Impossible Foods just announced a retail expansion. 1,700 Kroger-owned stores will carry the Impossible Burger. It's impossible to say how permanent this shift is. Some do believe that it's a phase, but I try to be optimistic. You know, a lot of people are trying these foods for the first time. I forgot who, which company, I think it was Tofurky, said that like 30% of the increase is new customers, people trying their foods for the first time. Yeah, so hopefully a lot of people are seeing just how good meat alternatives can be. Um, I've seen, I constantly see little tweets and reviews from people trying Beyond Burger for the first time and saying, wow, it's really good and I like it better than a regular burger, right? And these are just regular folk, you know, <laughs> they're not vegan by any means. As um, I forgot who it was from one of the Vox articles I read, I think on the Impossible Burger, they were saying that they ended up choosing Beyond Burger or something like that because number one, the store was like out of eggs or something. And then number two, just the thought of buying meat, <laughs> given everything that's that's going on, seemed like not the best decision. So they went with the, the plant-based alternative. And I guess that's the other reason I'm optimistic. While I'm sure a lot of people still don't know about this, I think more do know about the implications and just all the risks involved when we choose to eat animals and animal byproducts. I am seeing a lot of like mainstream articles talking about factory farming and pandemic risk, which is awesome. Yeah, clearly there are so many human-centered reasons not to kill animals for food. Like even if you don't care about animal welfare, there are still so many reasons not to support this industry. I mean, it's why I made that video, right? So that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. Was this like my shortest video ever? <laughs> I, wa I wanted this one to be short, right? Because you know, yeah. But I hope you enjoyed it. And um, I will say I wanted to do, YouTube does fundraisers now for certain channels. If you meet certain requirements over 100,000 subs, and I forgot what else, but I meet those requirements so I could do it, but they only have a select list of nonprofits. And that list doesn't include like any that focus on factory farming or plant-based alternatives like Good Food Institute, Mercy for Animals, anything like that. <laughs> I mean, that kind of says it all, right? There are COVID relief efforts as well, and I think Google is matching up to a certain point, um, but those are obviously getting a lot of attention right now. A lot of people to do are donating to those, so I would like to promote, obviously, something that most people watching this channel, I think, are, are interested in and would like to support, um, animals, obviously, animal welfare, but also something that is severely neglected, farm animal welfare. So yeah, there are lots of charities to donate to. I like animal charity evaluators. They have, I think, four recommended charities and then a bunch of standout charities as well to choose from. So if I know this is a hard time for a lot of us, but for some of us, we're still working and making money and uh, maybe have some cash that we can donate. So if you can, please do. It's a really, really good thing to do unless you do it. I mean, I do it once a year at the end of the year when they're doing a lot of donation matching and stuff like that. But I know for a lot of people, they like to do it every month and even schedule it so that they don't forget.